Hi, good evening. Thank you again for joining us for our 2020 City Mayoral and City Council Candidate Forum. We are finished now with our mayoral candidate questions and now we're moving on to our City Council candidates. So at this time, we will allow each of our council uh, candidates who are here tonight to have three minutes to uh, have opening remarks. So uh, for this order of progress, we're gonna start with our councilman at large candidates, move on to district three, and finally district four. So um, first we'll have opening remarks from Mr. Don Mim. Thank you. As Laura said, I am Don Mims and I'm candidate for councilman at large. You know, in talking to residents around the, the city, a few said they were unaware uh, that they could vote for the councilman at large because they had a councilman within their district already. And if I could just uh, briefly address that, uh, the councilman at large runs citywide, just like the mayor. Every registered voter in the city can vote for the councilman at large. The system actually gives everyone two city representatives and they can contact either one or both if they have a concern. We will work uh, together to resolve any of your problems if you'll contact us. <clears throat> My background comes from public education. I spent 13 years in a classroom as a teacher and 20 years as a school administrator and principal, working with families around the city. And hearing their concerns, I developed a deep commitment to the uh, community I served. Because of the relationship I developed with the families, I felt that, the, that in the position of councilman, I could continue to offer support to the Natchitoches community. I thank the people of Natchitoches who gave me the opportunity to serve as councilman over the last few years. <clears throat> I've been asked on occasion, what do the council do? What does the council do? The responsibilities of the council are broad. The council is a legislative body of the government. We enact the laws that govern the city. We approve the operating budget recommended by the mayor, monitor the revenues and expenditures and have the final say on planning and zoning land use as well as approval of, ma of major economic projects throughout the city. Throughout my time on the council, I've been guided by one philosophy. What we do should enhance the quality of life for all the people in the city. Whether it's recreation, economic development, infrastructure repair, planning zoning, or anything else. That's it? Okay, well, nothing. thank you very much. Yeah, just as a reminder, everyone, um, Tyler here is holding up the yellow card when you're at two minutes, and he'll hold up the red card when you're at three. So um, try to keep an eye out for those cards, just as a reminder. Now we will hear from Miss Betty Smith, and then we'll hear from Miss Sylvia Morrow. Good evening. Thank you, Miss Lyles. And I also want to thank the, NAC, the Northwestern uh, Student Government Association for putting on this forum this afternoon. As uh, Ms. Lyle said, I am Betty Sawyer Smith, and I am running for the office of City Councilman at Large. As he's already, he has already told you, Mr. Mim has, what the Councilman at Large position entails. I want you to know that I would like to serve all the citizens of Natchitoches. I will be the voice for everyone in the city of Natchitoches. I am a graduate of Northwestern State University. Uh, I, am, I am retired from the 10th Judicial District Court as a uh, Minister of Assistance to the Judges for 34 years, and I am currently employed as a substitute teacher with the Natchitoches Parish School Board. Uh, I am the mother of two children, and I have four grandchildren. My main concern is helping the citizens of Natchitoches be heard. I want everyone to have a fair chance at having a positive voice here in Natchitoches. So many times we've been overlooked, we can't get things done. Of course, the front street, back to third street is beautiful. We wanna make sure our whole city is beautiful, that people will be proud to come to Natchitoches. We wanna make sure we have good paying jobs where people can be able to afford to take care of their families and provide adequately for them. We want, I want proper housing for our citizens here. 
and I think everyone deserves a fair chance. And I will work for all of Natchitoches, not just a few, everyone. So I'm asking you to please consider voting for me as your councilman at Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. And that is all of our candidates for councilman at large. We'll now move on to District 3. We'll first hear from Ms. Sylvia Morrow, and then we will hear from Mr. Chris P.T. Good afternoon to Mrs. Lyles, to uh, members of the Student uh, Government Association, and facing the challenges to build a better community in which we live. And that's my platform as I travel throughout our community. I want to say good evening to the business community, to everyone that's listening in this afternoon. I'm Councilwoman Sylvia Morrow, and I come to you all tonight from District Number 3. I come to you tonight with leadership skills, accountability, and government experience, and I come to you with commitment and a great desire to serve our people where we live in the city of Natchitoches. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Natchitoches. I'm concerned about the infrastructure improvements in the district, street development, recreational enhancements, drainage improvements, housing development. Certainly, I'm concerned about transparency. I'm a former educator for the Natchitoches Prairie School Board. I served 17 years as a teacher's aide, and the other eight years I served as a teacher. I've been a family service coordinator in the central office here in Natchitoches, and I was a business owner. I had Happy Day Nursery and A.A. Frederick Center for young children, and I did an excellent job there and worked well in the community. And tonight I'm here, and if anybody have questions or comment, you certainly could get in touch with me, and I'm honored to be here. And my number on the ballot is 177. Vote for Sylvia Morrow. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Morrow. Next, we'll hear from Mr. P.T. So I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to have a chance to speak. And uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Nagadish, and uh, I am a product of District 3 community. And uh, when you hear the term, you know, the square, a lot of times it get a bad rap. But uh, I like, I'm like many other young men and women. I believe that I am one of those who seek good in the community and who is looking to make a change, a positive change. And I just thank you for the opportunity to speak today and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. PT. That is all of the candidates that we have present tonight for District 3. So now we will hear from Mr. Lawrence Baptiste, who is our candidate who's present tonight for District 4. At this time, we'll hear from Mr. Lawrence Baptiste. And he's making his way to the podium. So I will just uh, give a reminder that we do have uh, candidate responses available to read from our chamber questionnaire available at NacogdochesChamber.com slash candidates respond. Mr. Batiste. Thank you very much. <clears throat> my name is Lawrence Batiste. Uh, as my lawyer says, I'm trying to speak to the qualified voters of District 4. Um, I'm wanting to represent the people and the issues of District 4. Uh, I would also like to say, because of recent events, that um, we need to try, as Mr. P.T. has said, to look to the betterment of our districts and get off of personalities. Uh, Sometimes people aren't able to defend themselves when people make statements about them. But hey, you know, you have to be what you are when you say that's what you are. Now, my platform, so to speak, is built primarily on an organization that Mayor Posey has spoken of, and that's our Louisiana Municipal Review. And the February issue, which I've shared with some of the department heads, speak toward 
civility. And civility means the process that causes intelligent political debate to develop into productive cooperation among its members. So by saying that, I think the present council has gotten along fabulously. And I think that the biggest issue that we have is collaborative work. There are a lot of things that we can do, but I think Mr. Mims has uh, certainly explained what we are to do for each one of our districts. We are not mayors, we are not governors, and we are not department heads. We represent citizens in their individual homes who have made decisions to live in areas where they live. That's why we are elected to try and work and to try and make an inroad for them to city administration. So, based on that, that's my introduction. Okay, thank you, Mr. Batiste. Mm -hmm. At this time, we'll move into the question portion of our forum. And uh, we are going to start at this time with District 3. So I'll have Mr. Chris Petit come up for the first question. He'll be followed by uh, Ms. Morrow. Then we'll move on with the same question to our councilman at large. And we'll go with Ms. Smith, Mr. Mims, and then we'll finish with Mr. Batiste. So we had a lot of questions about um, affordable housing, housing in general, um, development of residential property. So the question is, do you feel our city council has done everything they can to enable residential development for all residents? And how will you work to make this process easier for developers? Uh, well, I believe as pertaining to District 3, uh, you know, whenever you're riding around in the community, you see like a lot of old houses that have been abandoned that need to be demolished. And it really makes our neighborhood look bad. Uh, so I would like to, you know, improve those areas and that's, you know, dealing with beautification. And also, too, if you tear down the old house, this opportunity to build for residents, you know, whether that house would be on Section 8, which we understand that a lot of our residents, they have low income, so we do need those, those housing opportunities. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Petit. Petit. Now we'll move on and hear from Ms. Morrow. I'm assuming it's the same question. I'd like to say that for the city of Natchitoches, all of our houses and homes that we have in the neighborhood, they are under the auspices of planning and zoning. And Mrs. Fowler was our planning and zoning director. Everything from District 3 when it comes to abandoned home has been turned into her office. As for timeline, they send a letter to the property owners to take a time for them to get back. When it comes to other development of houses, homes, uh, apartments. I've been a driving force for that in the uh, district number three. I work with Welch State Apartment to get developed, uh, Bayou Bend, uh, Magnolia Manor, Lakeview Apartments, not in district three, but I certainly fought at City Hall to bring it in. And also on the last end, when it comes to housing development, I work with Rose Property. And I've been a driving force for housing development since the early 80s. I served on the Natchitoches Redeveloping Board. I saw a flyer that was out in our community with misinformation. Now, the city of Natchitoches is now an entitlement area, so we don't do homes anymore. But back then in the 80s, I worked with Colonel Gray, and we brought in houses so that people could have houses, and they came from under the auspices of HUD. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Morrow. Now we'll move on to our councilman at large. Candidates, we'll start with Ms. Smith and then hear from Mr. Mims. Thank you. We do have a need for housing. As we stated earlier, there are a lot of homes that are dilapidated. A lot of people have moved out of Nacogdoches. They are 
homes, air, property. And I think a lot of those homes, abandoned homes, can be torn down and rebuilt. This would provide more tax dollars into Natchitoches. It would give people an opportunity to purchase homes. Uh, we have had a uh, realty company wanting to build affordable homes for people. They were not given that opportunity to do so. And I think it should have been done in order to give people an opportunity to have affordable housing. So I am willing to work with the mayor, with the council member, to look at ways that we can bring in affordable housing and homes that people can purchase for themselves. People need to be homeowners, not just renters, but homeowners. So I'm willing to work with the mayor and the council to bring in developments in order to build up uh, residency for, citizens, for the city of Natchitoches. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Now we'll hear from Mr. Mims. As was mentioned earlier, there's a lot of homes in the area, older homes that are in, in, in deplorable condition and they are up for demolition. That comes before the council every so often and we have a long list. We give the uh, homeowner an opportunity uh, to repair the home or replace it before it goes into to be torn down. Many times this property uh, is also falls uh, short of its taxes and when the city picks up this property. Once the houses are torn down, at one time, I, I think we still are, we we're working with a company that would resell the property and then rebuild the houses and possibly allow people to buy those homes. They, uh, a homeowner is much more responsible for their property than a renter, and they seem to maintain that a lot better. So I also agree that uh, a homeowner is much more better for the community, and it, it maintains much better the quality of a neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mims. And finally, uh, we'll hear now move on to District 4. We'll hear from Mr. Batiste. Same question. He's making his way down. I will just remind you that early voting starts this Saturday, June 20th, and goes through July 4th. So remember to get out and vote early. Okay, I'm enjoying being the <clears throat> caboose, so to speak, because Mr. Mims really um, nailed it in the head. Uh, when you come before the Zoning and Planning Committee, and one of the hot issues right now is mobile homes, that has been banned in Nagash, okay? So it took effect here recently. So what am I saying? Why am I studying up with that? Is that that's something that would only come to the council once an appeal is made from the Zoning and Planning Committee. And that's how council people get involved in that. But people will come to you and make suggestions that we have the power to give them transparency, so to speak, on the goings and comings. We don't. There's a department head of that, and then there's the mayor. And we, as council people, can move then to work with those individuals to help build or solve any problems that they might have. Also, too, earlier, uh, there was a code of ordinances that the city of Natchitoches has for planning and zoning. Uh, I know that everybody is not able to manipulate um, high-tech or technology things, but you have to be able to get your information so you will know what you're asking and you will not be... Uh, biased toward the individual that you're asking. And I'm not just talking about myself, but people, they've worked all day, they've invested in their property, uh, their parents have probably left, their pro uh, left the property to them, they've left and gone to other areas, 
And hey, you know, you just have to uh, be knowledgeable of what is going down against you when you are asked to do something by the city government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. I'll actually have you stay up, if, if you will. We'll keep it easy for you. Move on to the next question. We had several questions uh, from our community about animals, animal cruelty, shelters for animals, etc. So the question for everyone next is, what is your position regarding the increasing need to address the homeless and abused population of animals in our city? Well, um, that was a lady here, and I, I'm sure that uh, he knows me. He doesn't live here anymore. But his mom was overcome by vicious dogs. This has been 20 years ago. The only thing that I tell people who uh, would call me, and hey, I have to make calls myself. I know you people will remember this 20-foot snake that uh, had made its way through the community and was finally caught up Cane River. Uh, you have to call the, the animal shelter department. When you speak to the director, you tell him what's going on, what's the location, and the immediacy of what needs to be done. Uh, that's an area that is hiring, uh, has been hiring, and it's just an area that um, you almost have to have some experience in dealing with animals. I'm not saying you need to be a veterinarian, but you certainly wouldn't send an inexperienced person out to collar uh, a 15 to 20 foot snake or a loose dog that's foaming at the mouth. So my suggestion is to work with what's intact, and actually it's not a political hotbed for a change. Uh, it's located on the Fairgrounds Road, and it's recently been remodeled, so it's uh, able to be um, accessed by the community. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. Next we'll hear from Ms. Morrow in District 3. And after Ms. Morrow, we'll, we'll hear from Mr. P.T. Then we'll move on to our councilman at large candidates. Same question. Okay, I'd like to say Ms. Doe. Mizir is the director at the Natchitoches Animal Shelter. And certainly Mr. Mizir is an excellent worker. He comes into the neighborhood when called upon to make sure if you have a vicious animal, a snake, or whatever, he makes sure that it, that. It's taken care of. The problem is taken care of. He also said traps in the neighborhood as needed. And he has an excellent personality to work with the uh, community residents when entering the home. And then at our public works department, Mr. Michael Braxton, who's a public works director, he makes sure if there's a dead animal in the neighborhood, we have someone to go out, and make sure the animal is picked up. So the city of Natchez cover every base, make it safe for all of our citizens when it comes to animals and the care of these animals in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morrow. Now we'll hear from Mr. P.T. Uh, just to echo what Ms. Morrow and Mr. Baptiste stated, uh, we do have the shelter on Fairgrounds Road. And so from what I know, the majority of the time, that's who you would call, you know, if you have, have like stray dogs or anything uh, of that nature. Uh, also, too, uh, I have called uh, the city on occasions, you know, if you see something dead in the road, like cats or uh, things of that nature. So I can uh, speak to that, that you know, they will come out and do the job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. P.T. That is all of our candidates who are here for District 3. So now we will move on to our councilman at large with the same question. We'll first hear from Mr. Mims and then Ms. Smith. While he's making his way down, again, early voting starts this Saturday, June 20th through July 4th. Please vote early. The issue of cruelty to the animals is, is really something 
that, that, that really bothers me. Uh, when I watch that commercial on TV where they have the animals suffering and stuff like it, it just gets to me. It just, it just takes your heart away. Nack is just very fortunate. We do have a very nice, now, recently renovated animal shelter out there and attend to the animals very well. They're not damaged, they're not beat, they're, they're taken well, very good care of. We also have a couple of private agencies in town that collect a lot of animals and, and they sort through those kind of and raise them and take care of them. And then as they become more healthy and a better animal, they load them on a plane and send them up north. There's a lot of states that do not have enough pets and they, they are able to take these on so the animals are transferred from Natchitoches to another state to somebody that wants to take care of them and they make a home. So it's been very good. There's a lot going on in Natchitoches. We'd appreciate it if, if you have a loose animals running around that you would call the shelter and pick them up. Because uh, it's, it is a problem for the community and we don't want anybody to get bit and we don't want any rabies or any other. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mims. Did we start with Mr. Batiste on that? Ms. Sawyer, I'm sorry. I got lost. Ms. Sawyer, we'll hear from you next. Got ahead of myself. Thank you. I want to say we do have a wonderful animal shelter center here in Natchitoches who does an awesome job of caring for the animals. A uh, few years back, I had a foster daughter who, um, she loves animals. And she would often go over there and volunteer to help care for the dogs, bathe them, feed them, and, and that sort of thing. So I just want to say I think that the animal shelter department has done a wonderful job of caring for the animals. And one time there was, a, I think, a raccoon or something dead in my front yard, and I called them, and they came right out. So they are available anytime you call them. They will come out and assist you. So if you have a problem with them, I think Ms. Morrow told you you can also call Michael Braxton. I don't have that number, but call Michael Braxton or the animal shelter if you have a problem with any dead animal, anything like that. They will come out and assist you. Thank you. We had uh, some questions regarding how you uh, communicate with your constituents. So I'd like to address this question to everyone again. Um, how do you plan to process complaints from your constituents? What are your next steps? And in what ways will you be available to hear from them? I am available by telephone 24 seven. I'll be accessible to everyone. I want to be your voice. I will be visible in the community. There's a problem, you can call me any time of the day or night. It's, it will never be a problem. I'm here for the voters. I'm here for the citizens of Natchitoches. I'm here for everyone. So I want to be your voice. If you have a concern, feel free to contact me. I will try my best to handle it. I will listen to you. Don't think that I will not return your call. I may not return it that day because I will be busy working for you. And so, but I will return the call. I just want to let you know that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Now we will hear from Mr. Mims. After Mr. Mims, we'll move on to our District 3 candidates. We'll start with Ms. Morrow and then move on to Mr. P. The, uh, the phone numbers of all the councilmen are published on the Natchitoches website. So anytime that you need to find someone, anyone, you can look on that site <clears throat> and pull that number up. I've been called numerous times and always return the calls. And many times a person will say, you need to come out and look at this drainage, or you need to come out and look at this tree that's going to fall on my house, or this telephone pole that's leaning with the wires and so forth. So... You just be available, you, you look around, you, you, you talk to people and be aware, show your support and uh, make sure that, uh, that, that they're served properly. That's what, uh, what we plan to do and what we've always done in the past. I think all the councilmen have always been out there and available for everybody. But the, the phone numbers are available on the website anytime you need us.
Thank you, Mr. Mims. Now, again, we'll move on to District 3. Ms. Morrow, we'll start with you, and then we will move on to Mr. P.T. Thank you, Ms. Lyles. When it comes to representation, I think visibility is a very important factor. In District Number 3, everybody knows me. I'm always visible. I represent a specific part of the city, which is District 3, but then I serve with the city as well. I will survey my district often to assess the need, report all phone calls, return all phone calls back to my citizens. I share information with the mayor about the needs ass assessment of District Number 3 and make sure that all of the constituents' voices are heard and certainly I attend all council meetings and I report to the district person what goes on in the council meeting. At one time, we were publishing a newsletter, so I would always drop those newsletters off at the grocery stores, the churches, and everywhere I could in the public so that citizens from three would know what's going on. So I think that visibility is a main factor and I host forums in the district to keep the citizens well informed. Thank you, Ms. Morrow. Now we'll hear from Mr. P.T. Another friendly reminder that early voting starts this Saturday, June 20th, and goes through July 4th. Election day, if you don't make it to early voting, is July 11th. So please get out there and vote. Bring your friends with you. Yes, I have to agree with Ms. Morrow. I think it's important that we be visible in the community. Uh, as far as contacting me, I'm on social media. Uh, I was, I receive, I'll take texts, phone call, just whatever source, and just thank you. Thank you, Mr. PT. And finally, we'll hear from Mr. Batiste, District 4. I was already on the next question in my head. <laughs> okay. How, how, um, you're, no, how you're available to your constituents right, that's what and how you process any complaints that you right. get from them. Um, that's a, a trifold question because uh, first of all, people really don't initiate contact with government officials unless it's something that they themselves could not handle. Uh, I live in the heart of uh, Baylor Heights. Um, I'm proud to say that. I know it's a uh, <laughs> stronghold for uh, a lot of activity, but uh, I represent Baylor Hikes, Breeder Town, Highland Park, and Sudbury Park. And as the council members can attest, we have many issues from trailer parks needing electricity. Uh, we need uh, ditches that need to be uh, open for drainage. So my point is that I'm saying sometimes a knock on the door is much more effective than a telephone call uh, because immediacy, I just got to speaking to a guy about the new issue on um, trailer homes. He had promised his daughter that when she got uh, of age that he would get her um, a trailer home and put it on a lot that they have. Well, that was a no-no. He went through the process of the um, donor and planning committee, and he was a little alarmed when they told him that he couldn't do that. And he came, knocked on my door. I went and we talked. I gave him my number. I gave him the uh, department's number again where he could recontact them and ask them to give him some writing to show where that was no longer available. So. That's a process. And I think basically that's what anyone would do because we have a mayor council form of government. But does that mean we do not have uh, a mayor, uh, but we operate similar to a mayor department government? Uh, when we have an issue, we go to the mayor primarily after we've exhausted our given power by the code and 
the mayor contacts his department heads. And from that point, uh, resolutions are reached that way. We are contacts and representatives for the administration of the government in Natchitoches. And I hope I answered that question. Uh, like I said, just feel free, uh, and that's whether or not I win this time or not. Go to your representative's door, because, you know, we don't have privacy. Everything is visible. You can contact us in, at the grocery store, whatever, and ask questions, and we should be able to direct you quite quickly on how you can get a solution to any kind of problems that you might be having. That's time. Okay. And we've done that, too, so. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. Um, I'm going to have one more question, <coughs> but we don't have a lot of time. So this will be just directed to our councilman at large candidates. And I'm going to pull it from a question that was asked to our mayoral candidates. I'm going to start with Ms. Smith and end with Mr. Mims. If you can go ahead and make your way down while I'm asking the question. It's about utilities. There were several questions regarding the markup of utilities to fund a portion of the city's budget. What is your position on the continuation of this arrangement, and what do you believe is the best use of these funds? <clears throat> Tough question, Ms. Lyles. But let me say this, we have a budget and finance committee uh, department. Uh, the utility bills are pretty steep. There are people here who cannot afford to pay the high utility bills that we are assessed with. I don't know what the answer will be, but the only thing I can say is that I will work with department heads to study ways that we can look at maybe decreasing the amount of these bills. Uh, I think one of the other councilmen said earlier, um, more efficiency uh, homes, you know, but actually I don't know what we can do, but like I said, I will work to, with the council member and the mayor to study ways that we can see where we can maybe lower these rates that we are uh, encumbered with. Thank you, Ms. Sawyer. Ms. Smith, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ms. Sawyer Smith. Now we'll hear from Mr. Mims. Most of the utility rates and most any rates that we have, we always qualify them by checking with other cities our size to determine what the rates are <clears throat> so that we're not uh, killing the rates and we, we don't need the money. A lot of times it's, it's mandated what you spend, I mean, what you charge, and sometimes it's not. I'm not exactly sure how much more that we're charging than, than the regular rate or if we are. I'd like to know what we're spending it on and what the need for. I do not know that at this point. You're asking a question that I would like to go find, get more information on. If the rates can be reduced without affecting the quality of service that we give to the community, I'm 100%. But if that rate is based on what we need to have, just like the water rates, to operate the, the, the systems, then we'll have to look at that too. But the reduction of rates, not a problem for me if, if it's not going to affect the quality of service we give back to the community. Mr. Mims, I'll just ask you to stay on. Uh, that's all the time we have for questions. So at this time, everyone will have three minutes to make closing remarks. Thank you. Well, as you can see, basically, we're all for the same thing, for what's the best interest of Natchitoches. Uh, the council members and the mayor must work together to accomplish this. We all see that other elected bodies around the, the state and uh, country argue and fight among themselves and nothing gets done. What, what I bring to the table is an open mind, putting my personal opinion aside and looking at issues impartially. I'll be available to all citizens for phone or personal meeting. I work cooperatively with the mayor and other members of the council. And lastly, I have the experience to work with, what, with the council and the mayor that we have uh, currently been serving. I want to thank the chamber and Northwestern for putting us form together and ask everyone to please consider me again one more time, the councilman at large for this beautiful city. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Mims. Now we'll hear from Ms. Smith. Again, thank you, Ms. Lyles and NSUSJ for putting on this forum. I just want to say that I thank you all for this opportunity to be here this afternoon. And I will work for all the city of Natchitoches. I will be accessible to everyone. I will be visible in the community. I will welcome your phone calls. I will listen to your concerns. I I can't promise that I'm going to do everything the first year, but I will try. I will work untiringly with everyone, and as long as I can be there, I will make sure that your voice is heard. I will represent everybody fairly. I want you to know that the Council at Large position is an important position, as it is a check and balance position for the mayor. I will work with the council members to make sure that your voice is heard. I, I can't do everything, and I won't promise you that I will. I may not make everybody happy, but I will do my best to keep the integrity of that office. And I welcome your, your vote, number 175, June 20th, early voting through the July the 4th. Election Day, July 11. Please vote Betty Sawyer Smith. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Now we'll move on to District 3 candidates. We'll start with uh, Ms. Morrow and then move on to Mr. P.T. To Ms. Lyles and members of the Student Government Association, and to all of the members of our audience tonight, it's certainly been a pleasure here speaking tonight, participating in this forum. Hopefully some of our constituents, our visitors, you've learned exactly just how government works and how we could better be a better servant at City Hall. I do have an open door policy. I ask anyone who have an interest to contact me by calling me on, you'll see my phone number on the card. I invite you to join my steering committee. That way you will find out more about housing development, how we could acquire better housing in our district in the city as well. And may I share with all of our audience tonight that upcoming tomorrow, we will have another Juneteenth Festival on the Cane River. We invite all of you all to come to be a part of that celebration. It will be at 5.30 p.m. All council members had to work closely with the mayor for hosting this big event tomorrow. And we ask all of you all to come out to be a part of that great celebration. This will be uh, Juneteenth 20. Thank you. 2020. Thank you, Ms. Morrow. Now we'll hear from Mr. P.T. And lastly, we'll hear from Mr. Batiste. Uh, to the citizens of District 3, uh, I look forward to becoming the voice of those in the community to share and represent your thoughts. Uh, I just want to say that this is not about me. Uh, this is about the community. And I, I live in the community. I, I, a lot of people know me. I've coached. And there are things that I feel that can be better. And I want to represent that community. And I just ask for your vote, ballot number 178. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. P.T. Finally, we will hear from our District 4 Councilman candidate, Mr. Lawrence Batiste. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to say um, the election is about to come up, and I just want to thank the many people who've assisted me in making it through four years. Uh, I We'll say this, and uh, I think everybody knows I'm not a minister, but I do read that book, and I would like to refer to Psalms 39. I got that off the radio. I think that's from Westside Baptist Church, where he speaks of David, 
and no one was able to understand why David would suppress his passions and deal with his spirit within, within himself that he would not follow counsel that he had given to others. And the reason why is that it's a struggle sometimes as I interpreted this to, and especially in these days and times with the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we have to be able to listen and be still. And I think this, it comes from the Blue Letter Bible, if you are interested in following it up. And uh, David applies to God for pardon for his sins, the removal of his afflictions, and the lengthening, most importantly, out of his life till he was ready for his death. So, the early voting starts Saturday. It goes to July the 4th, and of course the election is July the 11th. And to all those people out there who do see transparency in me, I certainly would appreciate you allowing me to serve you for another four years. Check my record. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Batiste, and thank you to all of our uh, city council candidates for being here tonight. Uh, pr really appreciate you taking us up on the invitation, um, both to be at the forum and to turn in those written responses to our questionnaire. I'm just going to remind everyone again to go check out those written responses at nakedishchamber.com slash candidates respond. I do want to remind you again, as uh, several of our candidates said, that early voting starts this Saturday, June 20th, and goes through July 11th. I'm sorry, July 4th, and election day is on July 11th. So it's very important that you all get out and vote, bring your friends, bring your family, make it happen. I want to thank all of you at home who are tuning in on your computers and your phones. Uh, thank you for your patience. This is the first time doing it uh, in this format, and it worked out really well. So you can continue to see this type of event from the Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate you tuning in. And a special thanks also to our friends at Northwestern our Student Government Association volunteers. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And that is it. Go vote. Have a good evening.